of. So I use that as an excuse to try and go anywhere that I possibly can while I play. I try not to think too much, I try not to analyze. I never ask how many people are out there. Um, you know, I, I just try to walk out and take the experience um, for what it is and connect with the people that are there. But I never have a plan. And I think that's probably what might make me a little bit interesting is because you don't know what you're going to get from moment to moment, I guess. Eh, dice que trabaja mucho para escapar de la realidad 22 horas al día. Sin embargo, dice que siempre le busca un sentido a la vida y no analiza de más. Cree que esa es una de las claves de la vida. Dice que analizar de más desgasta. Lo que él hace es vivir experiencias y nunca tiene un plan. Se deja sorprender. And then what inspires me? Um, on, I mean, honestly, and it, it may sound like a cliche, but life. Life in general. I mean, kind of coming back to what his question, you know, just about the world and just how crazy it is. There's enough out there for me to write volumes, you know? Um, because internally, even though I, uh, I'm able to channel a lot of my anger into hopefully something positive, there's still so much negative out there, you know? And it's so foreign to me as a person that that in turn channels me into more anger, I'm trying to kind of wrap my head around all of these insane things that are going on in the world, you know? Um, so it, it's just life in general, you know? Whether it's something local at my, at, you know, at, at home or something thousands of miles away happening to people who, you know, may or may not listen to music that we get to make. So life in general is basically the biggest inspiration you should ever have. Dice que por eso no la cliché, pero la vida en sí misma es lo que más lo inspira. Aunque canalizo mi enojo en cosas positivas, hay tanta negatividad en el mundo que me enoja y entonces busco cómo canalizarlo y lo hago a través de mi música. Eh, es la vida en sí misma, de nuevo, aunque suena cliché, ya sea lo que pasa en mi casa o en la casa de mi vecino o lo que pasa en el otro continente, pero es la vida en sí misma lo que más me inspira. Gracias. Eh, Romina, gracias por venir a salvar la traducción. Eh, la pregunta es... I can't wait. He's my friend, he's my friend. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> eh, eh, ellos usan las máscaras. Eh, aquí en México, es una duda desde hace mucho tiempo que tengo, si influenció en algo, influyó en algo México o nuestra cultura para que ellos también usaran máscaras, que aquí se usa de forma habitual y de, de, de muchas tradiciones y también hay muchos de grupos de rock que lo hacen. Si hay una influencia por ahí, es una pregunta. Me gusta la pregunta. He's asking uh, about the masks. You know, in Mexico, using a mask is a big tradition. In, in, in different cultures and, and stuff, we use a lot of masks. So he wants to know if, if Mexico was in any way an inspiration or, or what's the reason behind the mask. In no way was Mexico an inspiration for the past. No, in lo absoluto no. Get that out of your head right now. Number two, uh, you know, they, they are a very hard thing to explain sometimes and there's a lot of different answers. Um, I, can't, I can't speak for all the guys in the band. They all have an opinion of what they mean for themselves. And I'm sure we all have a little bit different variation of why we wear them, but most of it is just, I guess the way I look at it these days, is it, it, it's really attributes to how much we love what we do. We just escape into our art, and, and whether you like it or not, the masks help you escape even further down the wormhole, so to speak. Um, I always wanted to wear a mask because I just didn't feel like I wanted to share that side of myself with everybody while I was living my dream. And the best way to do that is to just absolutely void yourself out from that potential. Um, so you can not have to reflect on things that you don't necessarily want to look at later. You know, the mask just kind of take that away. You know, you're always dealing with a clown. It's the same thing. And it, it allows us to kind of be what we want underneath. And sometimes it gets very emotional. You know, there's been tears, 
there's screaming, there, there's depression, there's happiness, there's love. And you know, we, we and it's funny because we, I can look at my, my brothers and know exactly what they're thinking and feeling and exactly what their face is under the mask, but I don't think anybody else in the world can. And I think that's the real point of what we share with that, that secret that is known as the mask. It's not really easy to explain, you know, it's just a little bit of it. Dice que no es fácil de explicar y que no puede hablar por todos, pero al menos él lo hace como un tributo a lo que hace, es parte de su arte, lo ayuda a transformarse y lo ayuda a compartir una parte del mismo que de otra forma sería difícil de, de compartir. Dice que le permite ser quien quiere ser. Una máscara a veces ayuda a, a que seamos más, más honestos, ¿no? Es como un, una paradoja. Dice que le ayuda a, a transmitir más emoción. A veces la emoción es depresión, a veces son lágrimas, a veces amor, a veces enojo, a veces felicidad, pero definitivamente tener una máscara irónicamente lo hace ser más él. Y la, la segunda pregunta, no, pero, es el, el, el metal ha tenido varias transformaciones para poder subsistir y, y se, ha, ha, se ha revolucionado y ha evolucionado y ha revolucionado. ¿Hacia dónde creen que va el, este sonido para que siga permaneciendo? Gracias. Okay, he says uh, metal music has been uh, transformed and has been changing in the last years. So, where do you think uh, metal music is going? And do you think it's it's an evolution that has got to happen? Um, I think it's going to go wherever it needs to go. You know, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about metal music because there's no because there's no real pressure on metal music it kind of goes where it wants to go you know there's always pressure on pop music or hip-hop to go one way or the other but with metal music because it's still so underground it can kind of go wherever it wants to it has no form so it can experiment when it wants to it can go back to, to like a, a more traditional sound if it wants to it can go into places that we never expected it to. So I, I think it's the last form of music that really has no restraint. Um, if, I had to, if I had to say where it was gonna go specifically, I don't know, because, but that's the exciting thing. Because when you hear it, you're like, oh, that's fucking amazing, you know? So you just never know. You kind of, you're kind of looking for the next band to take it and, and kind of channel their own voice through it. Uh, with no worries about whether or not it's going to be popular or not because metal music has always been the underdog so I, I think that's where it's going to go next I don't know where but I, I think the next band that really takes it and takes it where it needs to go it's going to be exciting Dice que el metal va a ir a donde tenga que ir sure. No hay presión en el metal El hip hop y el pop tienen presiones porque quieren quedar bien con cierto grupo de personas. Nosotros no, nosotros somos libres. El metal va a donde sea. El metal es la única música que no tiene ataduras. No sé a dónde va y eso para mí es tremendamente emocionante. Sé que se transforma y sé que se moldea, sé que es como una entidad viva. El metal es el patito feo y eso me encanta porque entonces no tenemos que quedar bien con nadie. Última pregunta, last question. Here goes, hi. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you, what's your reaction towards the family that Slipknot has brought together? I've been lucky to be in a couple of shows like Not Fest in San Bernardino or Download Festival, which was crazy and had to be stopped for a couple of times during the show, in the sense that uh, people, you can see kids, you can see people in wheelchairs in the mosh pits. And what do you feel being in the top and, and witnessing a huge mosh pit, but at the same time, a very strong family which people care for each other, people are not hurting anyone, people are respecting the toddlers or the old guys and it's, I think it's something that only music can bring together. Uh, I mean that's absolutely true, I mean when I was growing up and then I was listening to like thrash metal and speed metal and you know they were talking about in the pit, you know if somebody fell down they'd pick them up and that's that sort of mentality that carries through and now we've come this far not just us, but the genre of music, that everybody has that sort of like taking care of, of each other thing and it transcends and, and, and we are lucky, our, our particular band, because of the, the community that we have in Slipknot and the, and the family, you're very correct in saying that it is like a family. 
um, a lot of people have met through us, a lot of people have been married through us, a lot of people, you know, are raising their children because they met through, a, whether it should be a show or a chat room or whatever it is, and, and that's, uh, that's just not like uh, something that most fans can say that they've been able to do, and it's, it's you know, that's a cultural thing, and that's, that's a big deal. Bueno, la pregunta era que... Sorry, did I interrupt? Oh, no, go ahead. You're fine. Um, preguntaba que si es como una familia y que se siente... ¿Qué se siente ver eso, no? Desde el escenario, desde arriba, ver, ver cómo es el público que se ayudan entre ellos, que, que sonará que es metal, pero nunca hay violencia, ¿no? Y es un apoyo. Esa era la pregunta y la respuesta. Dice, cuando yo crecía, el metal era más de nicho, pero nosotros y el metal hemos ido creciendo y tienes toda la razón en lo que dices. El metal se trata de cuidarse unos a otros. Sí, somos una gran familia y sí, inclusive hay familias que se generan a través de nosotros, se conocen en nuestros conciertos, parejas, demás, y nos da como mucho gusto haber generado o, o ser como el, el factor que arma esta comunidad. Ok, would you like to say a last comment before to finish this conference? Yeah, yeah. Um, once again, thank you very much for having us. Um, we're really, really looking forward to the show on Saturday. It's uh, it's a long time coming. There's a lot of excitement. Um, we're just excited, just as excited as you guys are. And uh, we hope we don't let you down. Uh, we hope you guys have a good time. So thank you so much for having us. Gracias. for your visit to Mexico and for the next concert. Thank you. Thank you. Y gracias, señores de la prensa, por habernos acompañado esta mañana. Créanme que la convocatoria que logra Slipknot es única. Lo estamos viendo desde esta conferencia. Y el NotFest será un festival que hará historia en este país. Gracias a nombre de Cepeda Bros y Acusa Producciones. Buenos días.